This presentation is an introduction and overview of the GEM standard. The presentation's been broken down into five parts. And that's just so you can send information to the operator to resolve issues. The GEM standard is broken down into two sets of functionality. One is the fundamental requirements. And these are the things that everybody that does GEM really should implement, um, barring none. And it gives you some of the basic functionality that you want in every equipment, on every device that has a GEM interface. And then there's a bunch of additional capabilities, meaning you can be GEM compliant without implementing them. For example, recipe management. For some equipment that we work with, they don't really even need a recipe, so they don't have to implement that. Or remote control, maybe there's some devices that really only need to be monitored and not controlled, and that's okay. So GEM is scalable, so you only implement the features that actually apply to your equipment. Uh, the GEM standard is extremely efficient, messages, are transmitted always in a binary format. There are some human readable notations, but you should recall that it's always binary. Whereas a lot of these new standards coming out for communication, they're ASCII, and that just makes them inherently slower, uh, makes them require more bandwidth on the, on the networks. And believe it or not, in factories, uh, the bandwidth requirements are very important. There's limited hardware bandwidth and, that, uh, and using the right standards is important. GEM also uses a publish subscribe methodology for the data collection. So in order for data to be published to the host, the host does need to subscribe and to do that, the, the, each GEM interface is a message broker and a data broker residing on the equipment. So that, and that's what allows this publish subscribe to work so well. A lot of these new standards, again, they have message brokers, but they are off of the equipment. So again, you're slamming the factory networks with data that nobody's even subscribing to. GEM doesn't have that problem and makes very efficient use of the network you do have. GEM has state machines to manage different features. There's one for managing the rules to establish communication. There's another state machine for managing control of the equipment. Because um, sometimes you run the equipment with the operator in charge, and sometimes you want to run it uh, with the factory in charge and run it through remote control. So the GEM standard has ways to, to deal with that and manage who's actually in charge. Uh, every equipment is required to implement a processing state model. And this means that every equipment, you're, you can monitor the basic state of the equipment, is it actually processing or is it sitting idle? That's kind of the minimum information you want to publish, but you can customize, every equipment can customize this to provide more detail, just depending on. And this concludes part two of the GEM introduction. Please proceed to part three to learn more information about the GEM standard. Thank you.